I'm Stephanie Fritz, also known as Tsunami Steph on Twitter. Um, and I am the director of the Pacific County 911 and emergency management agencies. We are, um, I guess I would say, very rural, as Eric indicated. And um, Twitter and Facebook and social media in general have allowed us some great opportunities in terms of reaching not only, you would think, first off, you would think in a community of 21,000, it would be an easy job to reach the people and provide information, public education, but I can tell you that between Denise and I, we are actually 1.25 employees. Um, we're not two full-time employees, and it's a, it's a pretty tough row to hoe when you go out and you try and deliver a, a message. And Twitter and Facebook and all social media venues have provided us some efficiencies in terms of reaching out to the, our rural community. Um, I met Scott on Twitter. I met Tiffany on Twitter and Facebook. Um, even though they're right across the Columbia River, we're on Denise and I are situated on the north side of the Columbia River, right at the Pacific Ocean, for those of you who are not familiar with rural Washington and Oregon, and Scott and Tiffany are in Astoria. So the first thing that we've done, um, it's been kind of like eating the elephant in terms of delivering a public education message to our residents. Um, the first, one of the first things that we did in doing that was, and this was years ago, we started to create an email list. Now I have to tell you that when I joined the agency, um, I was the only person in the county who even had email. <laughs> it was back in the years of dial-up. So it's taken a long time. It took a long time. And our email list, our email information list was a voluntary list, it still is. People have to ask to be on it. Um, and it's been kind of a, a long time getting, to get, getting it all together. And with the advent of social media, we found that we were able to integrate our social media outlets, our email campaigns, all of this together extremely well and very efficiently. Now I have to tell you the integration has happened because of Denise. She's kind of the brains behind that operation. So I'm going to let her tell you how that has, has occurred. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I've been on vacation for two weeks, and so Stephanie wrote my bio. And when I came back, I don't think anyone was more surprised than myself to find out I'm the brains behind the operation. <laughs> um, that being said, um, we do have some integration. As Stephanie mentioned, we have the voluntary email list. Um, I've been with the agency for almost three years. Um, it's grown pretty significantly most recently after the tsunami advisory in March. I think we added probably over 100 people at that time. Um, and we've just now, after a list that Stephanie started 10 years ago, have reached over 400 people. We've had our Facebook page for less than two years, and we've already got over 500 fans. Um, if we have people local as well as out of the area um, that fanned our Facebook page, if you'd like to, um, it's facebook.com slash PCEMA, which is our acronym for Pacific County Emergency Management Agency. Um, yeah. So we use the, um, we kind of use all of the media outlets simultaneously. If, if we have an event going on, we craft a press release. Um, we then email the press release to our entire, what we call our weather warning email list, as well as to every Pacific County employee um, and our council and the media. That all goes out at one time. From there, we copy and paste it to a blog, um, which I created. It's not a true blog. I'm not so much a writer. I'm not very techy, which is why all this stuff isn't linked together, and there's a few steps. Um, but from our blog, then, we can click the little tweet button, we can copy the link to our Facebook page, and then we've reached, I don't know how many people, because from our emails, those get forwarded to groups of people that you know receive our email. People retweet the, um, the tweet, retweet the tweet. Um, people share our Facebook page um, link and so on. So we reach 
several people that way. Um, and while it does sound a little time consuming, it's actually, we've, we've pretty much got it down. It's pretty quick. Within minutes, we've got it out to all those um, outlets. So um, as an example, Stephanie mentioned we use it um, to get public information out. So if, if we could have a show of hands, um, people in the room who know what the drop, cover, and hold drill is. So I think it works. I think it works, too. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we were betting we might have more work to do. Yeah. So. Um, a most recent example of, uh, I, I personally um, am more of a Facebook user. I, when we first set up our agency page, I was really struggling with the fact that my personal name might be linked to this agency Facebook page. As we've progressed in the social media world, um, we found out we really have to be people in order for that engagement and interaction to happen. So um, when Disaster Denise started on Twitter, I was strictly business. I'm trying to work more into the Twitter world, um, trying to gain a personality, I guess, that I've been lacking. Um, that's been kind of a challenge for me, but I'm working on it. <coughs> So, um, but as I said, I'm more Facebook oriented. So most recently we've done, had some discussion um, on our Facebook page. I will say Stephanie and I are pretty good about um, checking our page for comments. We get, we have a lot of dialogue that happens there. Uh, most recently was the debate of drop, cover, and hold versus the triangle of life. And I don't know if you're familiar with both of those. Um, techniques, I guess, but we do um, follow the drop, cover, and hold, um, not the triangle of life, but there was just some really good discussion. Um, some people are more comfortable with triangle of life and so on. So if you'd like to visit our page, you could read that dialogue. It's a, it really is a true way for us to engage. It's back and forth between either Denise or I and our residents. Um, in addition to public education, the other thing that we found is that via Twitter, we were able to engage the media. Now, being from the southwest corner of Washington, we really are not covered by Portland, the Portland media market, nor are we covered by the Seattle media market. They kind of draw the line at Clatsop County and then at the county just north of us, Grays Harbor County. So we kind of miss out on a, on a lot of opportunities there, but via Twitter, we were actually able to make, and make contact with and engage um, Seattle media, some Portland media. Um, I'm thinking that it's Cairo 7 in Seattle that we engage with quite frequently, and then KATU in Portland that we engage with quite frequently, and it's worked out to be a surprise for me. I was really surprised when I found that people were reading what I'm tweeting and they're responding to it and they're coming to see me. They're coming to, they're calling me on the phone. I pick up the phone and it's Richard from Cairo and I'm like, oh my gosh. So um, it was a surprise and it was a challenge, but it has really opened up our ability to get information out, particularly in the case of an emergency. And I will relate this to the Japanese earthquake and tsunami warning for the Oregon coast, advisory for the Washington coast. That was a real challenge for us. The major media news markets like CNN, Fox News were reporting that the entire coastline was under a tsunami warning. We were able to use Twitter to actually make some corrected put out some corrected information. Didn't necessarily change what we saw on the TV screens going across in the middle of the night, but the people who, who knew us and knew that we were out there and on Facebook and on Twitter had the right information and knew they had the right information. And it's become a very dynamic public information, warning, and public education tool for our agency when we have as I said, 1.25 people, it's difficult for us to get out of the office, out into the community, and in a dynamic event, we're able to keep up and actually have, provide the right information at the right time. 
Hi, my name is Tiffany Estes, and I am a graphic designer and uh, web designer by day, and my foray into um, kind of emergency response happened somewhat accidentally. Uh, we had a fire December 16th in Astoria on the waterfront that destroyed a restaurant and uh, an adjacent building that housed about 20 to 24, 28 businesses and organizations. Um, that fire was about four blocks from my house, so I saw it happening. We went to the site. Uh, my husband works for the city, so he needed to be there anyway. And I felt really helpless um, standing there with people I knew who were watching their uh, life's work go up in flames. And I started thinking, you know, what, what resources do I have or what connections do I have that could be used to help? And uh, one of the volunteer activities that I'm involved in is the Downtown Association in Astoria. And we had been working for about a year to put together an inventory of our uh, buildings downtown, having uh, the correct contact information for the owners, uh, the tenants, the business information, um, square footage, all of those kind of details that didn't reside in any one location uh, up to that point. So the next morning, we got our inventory spreadsheet um, cleaned up, and we started sending it out to our own email list. And we shared that information with the Chamber of Commerce and anyone else that we felt had uh, tentacles out in the community to get that information out. We shared it with the media, all in hopes that uh, we might be able to help some of these people who were displaced to find space and get going again as quickly as they could. Um, that fire was on a, a late on a Thursday night, and I spent all day on the telephone the next day having one-to-one -one contact with people. And I felt very helpful, which was great, but I got home and I was exhausted, and I thought, wow, this really isn't very efficient. <laughs> so um, I started thinking about other ways to um, get this information out and to be able to connect people without forcing them to go through me when my office was open or the chamber when their office was open and they had people to answer the phones. And through my work, I had started doing some um, sites for clients in WordPress and I remembered how fast and easy it was to put up a site versus doing a custom site that I might spend uh, dozens of hours on. So at about 8 o'clock Friday night, I sat down and I started putting a site together, thinking, you know, this will solve all these problems. People can post information on the site, they can get information from the site, and they're not uh, locked down to a telephone and uh, someone being in an office. So I um, tried to start thinking of, of what, uh, what information we would have up there, and we basically set it up so that if you needed space, if you needed furniture or supplies, you could. we had pages set up specifically for those items. If you had space available or you wanted to donate furniture or supplies, those were uh, separate pages that people could use. Then it evolved even further for, um, you know, immediately when, as word got out, people wanted to donate money. Um, we figured out where to route them for that. Um, and then we also had people even subscribing to the site so that as new posts appeared, they would have that information and if they were able to help that specific person, they could contact them directly. So it worked out really well. Um, the Portland media picked up the story that weekend. The site traffic went way up. And uh, we even helped people, uh, once they did get either interim or permanent relocation situations set up, we had a page on the site for that too, so clients could find the people. Um, and we just wanted to get them back in action as quickly as possible so that it was such a major disruption could be less detrimental for them. Um, Scott was one of the people who found out about uh, the site probably within a few hours of it going up. And he got in touch with me right away and said, let me show you what else you can do with this. And Tiffany, when she says, we did this, we did that, for the first day, she did all of it. And uh, I work with a group called Oregon Voluntary Organizations Active in Disasters, or, or VOAD. So, and we had a, a disaster, a, a storm in our county uh, a few years ago. And so I've been through a long-term recovery process, and I thought I knew about it. And as I learned social media, I started trying to figure out ways to make it work. Uh, so I was... Uh, while Tiffany was building the blog, I was probably not more than, what, seven blocks away uh, in my house, putting together, uh, using curation tools to save the story 
of, uh, on, through Facebook and Twitter that was being told. There wasn't much Twitter activity, but lots of Facebook activity of people who had been in the building and who were, you know, were there. So, so many people, because it's a small town, uh, would show up at the fire and just kind of stand and, you know, horrified. Some left, some stayed all night. Some took videos and they shared them and what was going on on Facebook. Um, so I tried to capture all that. I used Storify and Keepstream to put that, uh, to save it all, and then uh, tried to go back and sort of organize it a little bit later. Uh, in the meantime, I was trying to figure out, well, you know, the recovery, recovery, how are we gonna do this? And Tiffany had already done it. I, as soon as I found her site, it was brilliant. It already had the needs, you know, categories for, for needs, for people who have things to, to, the resources for the needs. And we added a few more tools that were all free. Uh, we built a Google, uh, do, a Google list from the resources that we were pulling from the chamber and from, uh, from CEDAR, uh, Clatsop Economic Developer, De Development Resources. Uh, people were feeding us information, plus everything coming off of the blog, because we left it open so everybody could put in what put in their own, their own needs. And uh, we put a needs and resources list together in a Google Doc, which was available and linked through the website. Uh, I'm gonna ask my friend Mar if she's, I think she's already tweeted it, but we've got my friend Marlita who's doing virtual operations support today, and if she could tweet the link to the Astoria Fire blog, uh, so you can see that. Uh, it's astoriafire.wordpress.com. And uh, we, I also built a Google map that, uh, that we started plugging all of the information as we found out where people were going to be because even though it was only 28 businesses and nonprofits, there were hundreds and hundreds of people that had to know where they were going to go for these services and lunch and haircuts and uh, behavioral health and uh, my wife was even in that building. Her, her uh, nonprofit organization was located in that building. So lots of people affected by this that needed to be, have some place to go. So Tiffany's re uh, uh, inventory list, we had people running around town all uh, weekend using that resource list to find their new locations. People were putting, you know, more, putting more locations into the blog and so people, it, it provided people a real tool to, to use. Uh, the Google map provided a place for people to go so that they could, see, they could see where the old building was. They could also see where people had moved to both temporarily and then when they found new spaces, we put that and updated it. People had temporary phone numbers over the weekend because uh, no, you know, the fire burned, burned the, fire, the phone system. Nobody had a way of reaching, it, reaching, uh, reaching their people without that. So all of these things linked up through free, you know, free blogs and free Google sites and all. I wanted to also mention uh, actually Kate Starbird of Tweak the Tweet and Project Epic, who uh, I met through uh, watching the Crisis Data Conference, and that's another wonderful uh, the Red Cross Crisis Data Conference that happened last August, which was about set me on fire for figuring out how to make social media work with disasters, and my my specialty right now, which is disaster recovery. Um, anything else we need to cover? We're running out of time. I, I just wanted to add. I, I think uh, the tools that that Scott and I were able to put out for people really empowered them to help themselves and. When things like this happen, people who aren't affected directly want to help uh, very deeply, and people who have been affected need to find help. And this took a few links out of the chain and let people connect directly, which I think they really enjoyed being able to do. Um, it gave them a, a sense of um, doing something productive. Anything else? Uh, one, one more thing quickly. Um, I just found everybody that I met on that crisis data conference, uh, Wendy Harmon, Heather Blanchard of Crisis Commons, uh, Robert Scoble, uh, uh, Kate Starbird, as I said, all of them are so accessible through Twitter. You actually send a, direct, uh, a message uh, to them and, uh, and express interest. Uh, I'm actually talking with all of them now regularly. So it's just really interesting how just a, anybody can can uh, have access to people that are like the rock stars of this, in my view, of, of this uh, crisis data world. They're all so accessible and enthusiastic about the work and it really uh, made it work, made it important for us and, and or helped us. So thanks. <laughs>